back to the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press. Let's invite our guest, uh, a chief lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism, Jide Johnson. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, and thank God it's Friday. Fantastic. It's a pleasure to be with you. All right, let's begin with the Guardian newspaper, COVID-19. Three states at risk as federal government suggests precision lockdown. Ex-President Chagari's wife dies of COVID-19 complications. Stakeholders dis disturbed as Nigeria others lose $3.8 billion to environmental degradation. APC Group 6 Oshimbajo Presidency in 2023. Dubai-based returnee lover found dead in their emo apartment. Also, PDP has caught the Sagbuni as governor, swear in party's candidate. And Ambra, how Rancora's primaries boost relatively unknown parties. Um, let's quickly now turn to the next newspaper. Let's look at the nation um, or the punch. It says COVID-19. Free rise. States defend community testing. Stoppage. Experts warn of disaster. No mass testing if someone feels somehow. We test. AKT Tax Force Coordinator. Decision to stop community testing. Dangerous. Wrong. Short-sighted, says Tomori. All right. Now let's go to the Nigerian Tribune and see what stories we can find over there. The big one is on the PDP, of course, uh, and uh, May Malabuni, the Yobe State Governor. It says uh, the PDP goes to court. Uh, once uh, Buni sacked as Yobe governor, accuses him of, of holding two offices at the same time, says PDP governorship candidate in last election should be sworn in. Restructure Nigeria now to end agitation for secession, says Ayoku. Nigeria shuts UK High Commission as diplomats test positive for COVID-19. Also, Shehu Shagari's widow dies in isolation center. Federal government receives 177,600 uh, 177, doses of uh, Johnson & Johnson vaccines. Target elderly. Court dismisses Evans' 200 million Naira suit against police over uh, seized 25 trucks. And Ted Fund injected 2.5 trillion Naira in varsities and others in 10 years, says the federal government. Oshawa Assembly passes anti-open grazing bill. Missing Islamic cleric found dead inside vehicle in Ogun State. Those are the big ones on the Nigerian Tribune this morning. Let's take a look at the Nation newspaper. Striking doctor slammed with no work, no pay rule. Resident doctor summoned by industrial court. We won't surrender. Strike not best option to seek action. Governor's Forum cautions medics. APC Senator writes off Buhari 700 and 74,000 public works jobs. Family plans on autopsy on Faremi, Buhari, Tunubu, others mourn, and COVID-19 toll. Nigeria's UK High Commission shot. Government buying 40 million Johnson & Johnson for $298.5 million. The Eagles retrieves oxygen plans. Delta variants now dominant. Also, bank CEOs, how forex buyers, firms undermine CBN policy. Kidnapped chief imam found dead in Ogun. And uh, we also saw the story here on the Nation newspaper saying PDP asked court to sack Buni as governor. Pretty much uh, same things on the Daily Independent. Um, federal government rules out lockdown despite rising COVID-19 cases. Says it has spent 122 billion naira on 29 million doses of Johnson & Johnson vaccines, considers no work, no pay rule against striking doctors. Indonesia apologizes over manhandling of Nigerian diplomat. Eleven hostages escape from bandits' camp in Kaduna. And also, 17.5 billion naira flood funds. I have nothing to hide from EFCC, says Dixon. We have heavily depleted Boko Haram fighting force in Northeast, says Defense Headquarters. And Raymond Dokbesi says, only a northerner can win presidency for PDP in 2023. PDP asks court to remove Yobe governor and deputy from office. And uh, Mark Kalu Gana Wachiku Akilu say, IBB assembled best brains for Nigeria. As Nigeria shots UK embassy as diplomats test positive for COVID-19. Jude Johnson, good morning once again. It's a pleasure to be with you. Good morning. 
All right. Um, pretty interesting stories. Uh, I, I, can, I think we should start from the PDP's call for your Bay State Governor to step down, um, mostly because of the you know, accusations of holding two offices. Well, the best way to, to, to build a democratic system and representative government is to test every action under the constitutionality of the action. Constitutionalism is the key to democratic representative governance. So they should go to court, and the best way to test actions or inactions is to go to court and let the court through on the matter. Whether um, the governor has a right to combine the office of the governor of the state with that of managing the party. And, and it's good for our democracy. It's, it's, it's really good for our democracy. So until the court rule, we are in a state of um, confusion as to what should be and what ought to be. But under uh, basic, um, for example, you can't keep two jobs. You can't be working in, you can't be working in Plus TV and at the same time um, working in another uh, media organization. You can't, you can't combine that. So if you can't combine two jobs, if it's totally against the labor law, I don't see why um, the governor should combine two jobs. But it is not left for you and I to decide. It's left for the court to rule on the matter. And I like the way they approach the court. If Amici did not approach the court, he would not be the governor he was um, some few years ago, having lost out in the power play in PDP. So we need to to test the constitutionality of those of those actions in court and then um, that it's it's important it's important for us to, to 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 do that to establish that fact so that someone does not make that mistake if it's a mistake in the future and governance does not suffer at the expense of managing the party because if you look at it to the third eye definitely you'll be it is suffering because where the governor is meant to have meeting with the state executive council and other various MDAs in the state is busy running around looking for people to join the party, recruiting governors, senators, and House of Rep members and members of National Working Committee of the opposition party into his party and organizing Photoshop with those people with the president. They go to uh, Asso Rock and take picture with, with the president. Um, uh, Judy Johnson, does it uh, matter? Things that does it matter if it is not a, a paid employment, um, the second job that you know we're talking about now? It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't really matter because um, um, the reason why you are elected as the executive governor of a state is to manage the state resources, manage the state affair for a period of time, and not to combine that with other 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 functions. So it, it really matters. It really matters. Um, don't forget, Buni was the national secretary of APC before he took over from Gendam uh, until 2019, before he resigned to contest the election. Until 2018, rather, before he resigned to contest the primaries and he won the primaries, he took over from Gendam. And, and, and you know, Gendam too was the governor that spent 10 years as a governor. Most people did not know that because it, he was a former deputy governor before. He, so shortly after his governor was elected, the governor died and he spent the remaining two years and they won election uh, for two terms. So he was one of the governors that spent 10 years because the UOB people don't pay attention. So until you test the, con would that happen again? Until you test the constitutionality of the actions, we don't know whether what we are doing is right or whether what we are doing, what we are doing is wrong. The beauty of our democracy is that the PDP governors over sovereign went forward. PDP governors took over some job to court severally and they won at the supreme court in establishing some of the principles and some of the gains that the present um, state government are enjoying when it comes to their federal government and state government relationship so it's important it's important there's no way you tell me that ub state is not suffering from the governor not being around all the time and facing the party my advice is that if he wants to run the party he should leave he should because he, part of him that runs the party as national secretary when Oshiomole was the chairman, because it was the national party for Oshiomole before he resigned to contest the election, part of him is still there. So if he wants to do that, he should forget about public administration and face partisan politics. All right. You know, once you are elected, you are not meant to be partisan. All you right, are elected as the governor. Okay. Yes, um, let's move to another story. Lots of big ones, including this uh, 
um, the NARD strike, striking doctors slammed with no work, no pay rule. Um, that story is still there. Um, the doctors are insisting that they won't surrender, and they say that a no work, no pay rule really has no effect on them if they ha they're striking in the first place because they haven't been paid. You know, this, as this issue of doctors going on strike, we discussed this over, it will happen again next year. It will happen again until, you know what, until we decentralize um, a labor in Nigeria. Why should a doctor in Lagos be collecting the same amount with a doctor in Kara Namada or with a doctor in, 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 in Yube State, in, in Jigawa State, or in Anambra State? Doctors should be paid based on the contingency, based on the comparative advantage that you have in the area. And I tell people this, whether we like it or not, the doctors are stretched. But if you situate what the doctors are getting to what others are getting, nationwide you see that doctors are pampered in nigeria an average doctor once he graduates from school enter the civil service at level 12. every other person enter the civil service at level eight is there and then there's nowhere in the world i've asked people to tell me this there's nowhere in the world whereby you have doctors practicing in public institutions and operating their own private hospital i want anybody to tell me where it mm. happens i want anybody anyone to tell me to give me that so doctors, the practices they they do in Nigeria, they what they enjoy in Nigeria, they don't enjoy anywhere else. Average, an average doctor in public hospital in Nigeria has his own private hospital. I can say that without a fact. Can you have your own private business where you are working now? Okay. So it's important. We understand. We understand that they are pressured. We understand that the number of doctors we have are not enough. But at the same time, they should also look at the comparative advantage they get from working in Nigeria. Okay, Jira Johnson. Talk about medical industry. Yeah, Jira Johnson. So because right I'm now, the federal yeah. government has taken this matter to the industrial court, asking the um, doctors to show reason why you know they should uh, you know continue with their strike. What what kind of judgment may you be expecting from that industrial court? Now, should you be paid for not working? It's a basic rule. Should you be paid for not working? How many times have doctors gone on strike? How many times? How many times? In 1992, I remember my dad was sick. The doctors went on strike. I'm telling you for, for a fact. 2018, 2018, 2019, my wife was sick. I knew the number of days, months that I spent in the hospital. The doctor went on strike. If I document my experience with the medical industry in with the, with the state of hospital in Nigeria, you'll be shocked. They went on strike. My wife was on treatment. She was on chemotherapy. There was nobody anywhere to attend to her. So I know what I'm talking about. But it's All not... you need to do, they move you to private, they move you to their private hospital. You can go and do your check. Yeah, but, so but Judy Johnson, it's not, it's not justification uh, for um, not being paid salaries or not having better hazard allowances. No, they are fighting over, they are not, it's not that they are not being paid salary, they are fighting over allowances. Yeah, exactly. So it's so the fact that they have no, no. their it's private. Over, it's over. I agree. I agree with you that they should be paid their allowances, but should they go totally on strike and expect to be paid their salaries? Do you get paid for what you are not working for? I have told you. Look, which sector in Nigeria is enjoying what the doctors are enjoying? I'm throwing it to you. Which sector? Every sector is affected. The education, are teachers getting what they deserve? Um, uh, Jida Johnson, well, every sector. So, so how how would you how would you suggest that they um, express themselves better? Look, um, how do they express? Yeah. So, so how do they put out their their concerns the, to the I government were, if better? If I were to be in the position, if I were to be in the position of federal government, well, I've said it. We need to decentralize it. We need to federalize. We don't need to unitize labor so that each state will pay. Each state will pay its doctor according to what, what it can afford. And that's what I will do. And then the next thing I will do is that if we give you all what you want, you will not engage in private practices. Exactly, Jida Johnson. And not. exactly where I was going that, you know, they might, you know, if we put give up you, a defense. Government give them everything you want and anyone that engages in private, you prosecute. 
You G pussy good day. Jada Johnson, I said that that's where I'm going. That most of these doctors are saying the reason why they engage in those private practices is because they're hardly getting anything from their um, their nine to five jobs or their jobs, you know, with the government. But let's quickly move on from that. Now, lots of other big stories on the papers. Um, there's this one that we've seen on uh, the papers. It talks about an apology from the Indonesian government uh, to the federal government um, regarding that assault on the Nigerian diplomat. Um, first of all, we've talked about how Nigerians are seen abroad. And um, what do you think the response might have been if the country, if the citizen was not a Nigerian, maybe if it was a US national, do you think that assault would have ever taken place in the first place? And what sort of diplomatic moves do you expect the government to do, apart from recalling that um, diplomat? And that's to, you know, put up a strong message out to other countries. Jede Johnson. Okay, there seems to be a, a technical glitch. Jede Johnson, can you hear us? You loud and clear. Can you hear me? Yes, now? please go ahead. go ahead. Okay, so you you recall during COVID nineteen, there's a particular case in Nigeria in China, where Nigerians were singled out by the Chinese government, and there was a Nigerian diplomat that challenged them for that. He was, he was, he was maltreated. What do we do? We didn't do anything. Now, I saw that, that, that incident. What that guy was doing, he was doing it to the president of Nigeria. Not, he was doing it to the president of Nigeria. So any, any member of a foreign diplomatic corps that is harassed, whatever is done to that person, is being harassed. It's Nigeria that is being, it's the president of Nigeria that is being harassed. He must be treated with dignity. It's against international law and treaty. What I expected the president to have done is to have called for the letter of credence of the ambassador of Indonesia to Nigeria. He will withdraw his letter of credence. That's the highest form of sending messages diplomatically, rather than requiring for an apology. Oh, mm -hmm. an apology. The damage has been done. You withdraw the letter of credence. You invite the ambassador and you talk to the ambassador. I saw the foreign affairs minister giving a press conference. That doesn't stop the problem. That will make it to happen again because they know we don't pull our weight. If you don't pull your weight, if someone maltreats your children and he gets away with it, he will do it over and over and over and over. Mm -hmm. Even for Togo, Republic of Benin, you have not seen their diplomats being harassed all over the world. It's only Nigerian diplomats that are harassed and are harassed. And because we don't do anything, we don't do anything. To, to, to hell with their, 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 right. their, their apology. Who needs their apology? Who okay. needs their apology? From now, let's uh, talk about a statement. Is that let's talk about a statement on Daily Independent. It's from Raymond uh, Dokpes, I believe, who says that only a northerner can... Um, it says uh, only a northerner can win presidency for PDP in 2023. And that is from Doc Bessie. Don't you, don't you know that it's very clear that um, this battle for the soul of PDP by Wiki over that the removal of secondos is about ensuring that um, they have control over that party. It's very clear, I will tell you, um, you have not had anything from, from um, Kwankwaso. Kwankwaso, since the last election, you have not had anything. He has not contributed any meaningful... Um, they have not made any meaningful contribution to public discourse in the last in the last two years. By by next year or towards the tail end of this year, will come out to be presidential candidate. It's very very clear. Just wait two to time. Um, I think two will come out despite selective comments in it. Tambo Tambo that has remained quiet, but that took over the PDP governor's forum chairman. We also come out. So it's evidently clear the stakes are higher. For them, and then if you are strategic, if they are strategic as a party, they will look at their chances of of winning the presidency. I have said it loud and clear that the the PDP, not even before now, since 2019, that the PDP's presidential candidate will come from the north. It's 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 clear. It's clear from all indication. The actors and the players in the party, majority of them are women. They are from the north. So, who are the presidential candidates that you have in PDP that have muscles in the southwest, in the south, in the southeast? And in the south, 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 it's only wiki that you have in the in the in the in the south, south. Does he have? Does he have um, what it takes to be the president of Nigeria? It's left for the Nigerian electorate to decide. It's not left for Gideon Johnson to decide. Um, Chihima Kinde in the in the southwest is the only governor that they have. Okay, 
Do we want to risk strategy for strategy? Will he want to seek second time as a governor or to pursue presidential ambition? Is all, all left there for every one of us um, to see? And then in the southeast, the governors, we don't even know whether the southeast governors are in PDP or they are in APC or they are hibernated. So there is only two of them that is left. And um, where they belong to, you don't, you don't, you don't really know. So it's, uh, it's, it's just the, uh, the other person in the south South, South, the governor of um, Aquabom, Aquabom State. So uh, it's 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 clear. This thing is is, is like a game. We, you you study the game. You look at the actors and the players, and then you know, like chess, because politics is like chess. It's a power play. You understand those that are those that are pawns, those that are bishops, those that are rooks, and those that are king and queen. So the kingmakers of the party are are aware. The stakes are higher. For people in the north than people in the south, and if they are strategic about it, they position themselves to bring the presidency from from the south. And in 1999, the constitution does not have any provision. I, I say that without it. does not have any provisions for for rotational presidency. It does not have any provision. There's no there's no um, power rotation in 1999 constitution. It's just a PDP arrangement that they put in place. In, and their last president, they can justify that their last president was from the South South. So they can see that, that now that they want to bring their next president from from the north. So Okay. Give Johnson. See how it pans out. So yeah. um let's talk about auditing government policies. Um an AP APC senator um was at a conference yesterday and one of the statements he made was about condemning the seven hundred and seventy four thousand jobs um you know for the public works. And he says that the 52 billion naira that was earmarked for that could have been used to set up industries, factories, and um, other revenue generating streams in Nigeria, rather than um, a system of money sharing that is now causing youth restiveness. And he said that even the 60,000 naira that was promised to each each of these youth at the end of three months have not even been given to them, and that you know that has just been causing lots of fights um, in that system. So. Talking about auditing government's um, processes, going back to this, remember when um, Festus Skiamo came up with this whole um, 774,000 jobs? You know, it cost quite a stay at that time. And the jobs was many old jobs like cleaning gutters and all of that. And people really asked, is that what government would call empowerment of the youth? Um, looking back now, would you say that program was successful or just like this APC senator, that 52 billion naira could have been used um, for more long-term projects that will benefit um, a, a wider number of people? Um, those, they call it poverty alleviation. Um, I asked you, the Obasan just started with PAP. Can PAP quench your hunger? I'm asking you, you know, look at PAP. It's called Poverty Elevation Program. The question is, can PAP quench your hunger? Then they came up with NAPEP. And this particular administration loves sharing money. No doubt about that. And when you talk about the, 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 the dangers of sharing money, the inflationary effect of sharing money, of pushing too much money into the economy, people who accuse you of being biased, of being partisan. Where, where is traders' money? The one they shared before the election. Where's traders' money? What impact? That the vice president almost lost his life transversing the length and breadth of Nigeria, sharing money to market people. What impact has he had on the market? What impact has he, has he had on the commodity price index of product? Now, this other one, when Kayamon came on here and said that they are going to employ 1,000, I'm looking for 1,000 1, people that were employed in my local government. I've lived in my own local government for more than 40 years. I've played politics to a certain extent in my, in my local government. I know the actors and players of... There are 11 words in my local government. I can tell you the boundary of my local government. So I know it like the back of my... I want to know the number of people that was employed in the back of their local government, for example. Where are they? Where do they live? Which street? Which area? Are they from Ifako? Or are they from Iju? Or are they from Niwokoba? Or are they from Ujukuru? I want to know. I've given you the four geopolitical zones in the fact that a local government. Forget about the nonsensical SCBA they created. I've given you that example. Now, which, where, where, where is the, the 1,000 for my local government? Where are the people that were employed? How many were employed from Iju? Iju has three words. If I go has three words. Niwokoba has two words. And uh, Ujokoro has, has three words. That's 11 words. 
Now we are we are we are the people that are employed from from from, from those areas. When people wants to make money for themselves, they create they create a white elephant project. Said we are going to create seven hundred seventy four jobs, and you pay them sixty thousand. At the end of three months, what happens to them? And they will come, and the media will not grill them with good questioning. Rather, the media will ask them patronizing questions. You'll be patronizing them rather than putting them on hot seat. That's, that's the problem. That's the problem. That's the problem. Part of the problem is that our own industry is not holding them accountable to it. And that's what Section 22, the second part of Section 22 of 1999 Constitution says, is that we shall be the work done and shall hold government accountable. How is it possible? Can Festus Kayamo employ his own children to be sweeping gutters? Or to be cleaning the streets? Is that the type of job you want to give to the youth? They didn't talk about sending them to computer village to go and learn about the trade. They didn't talk about creating um, technical education so that they send people to go and to go and learn a particular trade. After that trade, you empower them with it. No, you want to dash their money. And then look, I can tell you without fear that some people collected the money. Majority of the names on that on that list are fictitious. They are fictitious names because who audit? Do, do you have evidence for that, that Judy Johnson? Do you have no, evidence no, for your no, claims? No, look, listen, look. The palliative money that was shared. Just yesterday, I read the report where the minister, one minister, said ten million people have been lifted out of poverty. Is the people just banned the statistics? You are asking me for evidence. Did you ask them for their own evidence too? Their own physical evidence. The type of question you are asking me is the type of question an analyst should be asking them when they go to press conferences. That's the question. Provide us with evidence. Only fools argue with, with with facts. And evidence are fact based. Now, do, do, has anybody came out? The minister said we have lifted 10 million people in six years out of poverty. Where is the evidence? We saw during the lockdown that the, the minister was sharing money in, a, in, a, in the Minister of Social what Social, I remember, Social and Humanitarian Services. They were sharing money in Abuja. Is that how you run an economy? Where you buy, you pump money into the economy? That takes me to the story of what the banks were saying. Where did you see in anywhere in the world where people sell dollars, foreign currency on the street? Where? Where do you see in anywhere in the world that you have a parallel market? Do you think that people that are engaging in currency trading will want the value of Naira to improve? They will want the value of Naira to improve. Do you think that people that have stolen money that, and have taken it abroad, that their, their assets are in, are in dollars, are in dollars, will want the value of Naira to match that of, that of, that of dollar? No way! No way. When we were small, when we were small, the when we were young, rather, the Ghanaian currency was worthless compared to the Nigerian currency. The CD, CD was divided as as toilet paper. That in 1983 we even asked the Ghana Ghanaian to leave our economy. Now what has happened to Ghana now? How many Ghanaian politicians do you think have stolen money abroad, like we repatriate money abroad? How many recovery have they made? I mean, I'm asking you, until, until we stop the preparation of funds to foreign countries, we, you see the value of Naira can never improve. Because those that have stolen money from this country and those that are making money from the parallel market will not want the value. Just imagine, I'm asking you, if the value of Naira, a Naira to a dollar, is let's say it's five Naira to a dollar. I'm throwing it to you. Five Naira to a dollar. What do you think will happen? To all those people that have stolen money away from Nigeria, all the assets. All right, Mr. Johnson. We saw, we saw the images. Let, let me end with this. We saw the images. The supposed leader of APC and the actual leader of APC. We saw both of them in London, taking medical treatment in London. That gives you an example of what is wrong with this country. When you're asking me, uh, what, 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 right. what, 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 why would doctors not go on strike? Where thank you, Jide Johnson. We appreciate your enthusiasm and, and your, and your thank, opinion thank as you always. Much. The pleasure, Thanks for joining us. It's, thank it's you. a pleasure to be with you, but I'm looking for that job of doing the mic. <laughs> so if you give All me right. that job, I'm very, very glad. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll, of course, look forward to another Friday uh, so morning. It's with a pleasure you. to be with you. All right. Stay with us. Uh, let's go back in history. I'm uh, going to be sharing something in a very, very, very terrible attack on two ladies in 1967. Uh, today in history, 13th yeah, of August. I was going to share that, but yes, we'll be right back. <laughs>